Well, how y'all doing? I've decided to put this video together. It was a time lapse of a uh, addition that I framed in on a flip house we did. Um, this job was done and uh, we've already sold that house. It was a fun little project. While uh, I was waiting on the framers to finish up another house for me, I thought I would try to tackle this crawl space. I actually did all the block work myself for this, uh, this addition and wouldn't you know it, as soon as I started digging we hit bad dirt. Um, I think the bottom of the footings are at about seven feet and I think we poured two truckloads of concrete on this job to uh, build it up and I still had about a, a five foot wall of block to build all the way around. Um, I think the addition is about, uh, it's about 24 by 33 or something like that. And I just had to build part of it over top of an existing slab that I kind of drilled through to make sure that it was uh, pretty good and thick. It was about four to six inches on a gravel compacted base it felt like. So it looked good, no cracks, that thing was pretty old. So I had to build these little knee walls right there, and then uh, that's what I placed the joist on top of. That's what the engineer kind of specced out. Um, that way there will be a little bit of room to get underneath there. It was tight. I mean, it was right at 24 inches to get in there, and it was pretty doggone tight. This house just never seemed to dry out. Um, just this area of Charlotte has a high water table and when it started raining you would just see water coming from below in the crawl space. I mean you, you didn't have to dig down more than six eight inches and you would hit water and so it was just a tough tough job. I ended up buying uh, tracks for my bobcat. That was about the only way I was able to kind of even navigate navigate this site. And even with those tracks, I was getting stuck constantly. So this one's done. I'm hoping I never have a, another situation like this again, but I'm actually looking right now for a track machine, um, either like a bobcat T590 or I don't know how to pronounce it but that Takakuchi uh, those ones seem everybody that has those seem to really love them and uh, they seem like a pretty good value so I've kind of been looking at those too kind of feel bad doing that though um, Bobcat is a uh, what well, was a North Dakota company and you know I have roots in North Dakota so I try to support my fellow neighbors but this was a uh, master bedroom, bathroom, and laundry room, and mud room. So it was a pretty good space. This was a mid-century modern house that we bought, and we completely gutted the entire inside and all new systems um, throughout. And uh, this was kind of early on in the, uh, the work. I had three other houses going, and so I would just kind of come by here and and do some work when I could and on the weekends until I got to a point where my framing crew could start. We were kind of just sitting waiting on them. I will say I gotta give credit to those uh, service extra tough rubber boots you see uh, everybody wearing on like the deadliest catch. I've had a pair of those now for close to 20 years I don't think I even have a hole in them, and you can work all day long in those things. Um, everything was just covered in mud on this job, so just like regular leather work boots were worthless. By the end of the day, you would just be covered in uh, your feet and your socks would just be wet. This is Southern Yellow Pine, um, 2x10, and uh, pretty straightforward nice little crawl space we ended up doing a sealed crawl on this job because of how much water we had and uh, I think it averaged out to about three bucks a foot that's kind of where I came in on that and that was with two dehumidifiers 
This house was, I think, a little over 3,000 square feet when we sold it. Yeah, I spent a lot of time on the phone. Kind of finishing up here. It's always tough to remember where the toilet and all the drains and you know all the obstructions go. It would be nice if I had an actual framing plan for this, but a lot of times on small jobs you don't get that and uh, you just kind of have to lay down in the field. This is like a sunken section right here where the uh, this is going to be like where you enter off the carport and you're going to step up, I think two risers up into kind of kind of a little bit of a mudroom drop zone. Just depends on what you kind of want to call it. So I had to fit each one of these uh, joist to, uh, to get it. It looks like I notched them pretty good, but that thing felt really, really solid when it was done. Also in the market for a telehandler. If any of you guys have any recommendations on those, um, I think that that would really, really help me out a lot in carrying materials. So I don't know if you can tell from there, but I did. It was treated wood all the way across where that concrete section was by code. If it's within 24 inches, um, and I was really close, I didn't want to take the chance with the inspector, so I just went ahead and did treated wood over top of that concrete. But it got a little bit bigger, or well, it dropped down into the dirt section pretty quick, and then you had, gosh, good three, three and a half feet of crawl space after that. using glue and two and three eighth inch shank, shank nails, ring shank nails on this. I'm sure by now you've probably noticed my uh, new working attire. I moved over to these uh, Dickies coverall jumpsuit, I don't know what you want to call it. And I'll be the first to tell you, yeah, they look ridiculous, but man, they are comfortable. Um, as a uh, white guy with no butt, I can tell you, man, you know, you're just constantly pulling up your pants and fighting that. And with these dickies, uh, you just, you don't have that. And uh, I also added some suspenders to my tool belt and I really, really love that. I couldn't find a, a tool belt I really liked and so I kind of modified the one I have. Um, just some rivets and some actual uh, like picture framing hardware and I was able to get those done. Uh, I really like it. The other thing I like about these, the Dickey thing is uh, like at the end of a job or if I get called away during the middle of the job, I can take it off really quick, you know, put on my uh, meet and client clothes and, uh, and go there and then just come back and change really quick. Um, I've got probably five or six pairs of these and so just kind of you know, let them kind of mount up and then take them home and, and do laundry, kind of clean them out. So I went ahead and covered this job. I didn't know how long it was going to sit there, but that's about it. Hey, thanks for watching. More videos coming.